Hello there, happy people, Jean here, and I know we've all been waiting to see the May the first LEGO Star Wars drops out of box, so let's just get right to it. Before I start, thanks so much to the LEGO group for sending these sets over to me for review. All thoughts and opinions are my own. Do me a favor, I've dropped affiliate links in the caption below to these products on the LEGO website. It would mean the world to me if you use them when you're ready to make your purchase, and it would help support my channel and the content you see. First up, we have the Bark Speeder Escape Set 75378. It's going to retail for $29.99 USD at 221 pieces. So we know that this Lego set is depicting that scene in Mandalorian where we finally find out how Grogu escaped Order 66. He's whisked out of the Jedi Temple by Keller and Beck. And speaking of the Jedi Temple, we actually get our first piece ever of the Jedi Temple, this lamp post. Isn't that so bizarre? Is this like the first lamp post in Star Wars? This set comes with four minifigures, Grogu that looks like the exact same Grogu we've been seeing in sets since The Mandalorian came out, two 501st Troopers, they look really great, they do have helmet holes, I personally don't care, the face mold underneath, and then we have Keller and Beck. His torso has some really cool gold detailing on the front side and on the back side, printing on the front side of the legs, but nothing on the side. I feel like kind of a missed opportunity there. We do get a cape on Keller and Beck and he's wielding two lightsabers, a blue one and a green one. Was hearing a lot of complaints about the similarities between the Keller and Beck minifigure and Mace Windu's minifigure. And so I'm gonna bring Mace Windu's minifigure out and compare the two. Right off the bat, I'm going to tell you that the torso for Keller and Beck is better. It has that gold detailing that just looks so cool and shiny. The belt even has like different detailing than Mace Windu's. Now where Mace Windu's minifigure does better is that he has arm printing. He has the Republic logo on one side and then on the other side, I don't know, some kind of communication device. Mace also has white printing on his legs. So I guess he's wearing white pants versus Keller and Beck who is wearing the more sandy colored pants. As far as the backside of the torso, again, very similar looking. The belts are different and Keller and Beck does have that gold detailing that I do like. Keller and Beck also has facial hair, whereas Mace Windu is clean shaven. This set did come with four stickers and they are all on the speeder bike itself. So one of them, it's quite large. It's in the front side of the sidecar where Grogu is sitting on. I don't even mind it because it is a large sticker, but I do think it's just like so large and obviously a sticker. The other three are here on the back of the sidecar and probably my least favorite part about having stickers on any Lego sets is when they're white. I know that there's the ability to have them be clear stickers. So I don't know why the choice is to go with white on white because the white of the sticker always looks way too bright compared to the brick and makes the brick look like it's off white. But anywho, here are the three stickers on the backside of the speeder bike so you could see them. I think this is a really great little set commemorating the scene. I think the bark speeder looks really great. The coloring on it looks awesome. It has two stud shooters in the front. Boop. Those are lost forever. The little pram that Grogu comes in can be mounted and dismounted and it actually comes with a little clear round Lego part. So if you wanted to sit it on its own separate from the speeder, you can do that. The Technic pins connecting the sidecar to the speeder allow for some movement like so. If you wanted to have this on a stand or something, I think this is gonna look really cool on a display. I think the size is really great. If you'll entertain me for a moment, I did put this Lego set on an acrylic display stand. This is an acrylic display stand from Tricked Out Bricks. I really love their products and frequently purchase from them. So this is what it looks like. See what I mean? It. I think it just looks really cool on a display stand like if it's in motion. I have the stand hooked on to the Bark Speeder bike. If I wanted to, I can angle Grogu to the side as if it's in motion. Pretty freaking cool, honestly. Curious to hear your thoughts below. Let me know if this is a set you're thinking of picking up. Personally, I would recommend this set at retail price. I think the value is there. You get four minifigures, 220 pieces. Your first official Lego Star Wars piece of the Jedi Temple and really just commemorating a really awesome scene of the Mandalorian. Next up, we have Darth Maul's Sith Infiltrator set 75383. This will retail for $69.99 and it is 640 pieces. Here is the instruction booklet with nothing really of note. Although you may be excited to know this set has zero stickers, which for $70 and for everything that I'm about to tell you, yes, this set should definitely not have had any stickers. We get three minifigures in this set, a young Anakin. I believe this is a new Anakin mold. It's just a little young Anakin Skywalker with his Tatooine outfit. Here is his second face printing. Qui-Gon Jinn. I am so thrilled to finally have a Qui-Gon Jinn minifigure in my collection, his hairpiece 
piece looks really great. His face print shows the dual color of his beard with some light gray in there along with the reddish brown. The poncho edition, I am just such a big fan of poncho representation in Star Wars. His poncho is like really fluffy too. The torso appears to be a new torso. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but the torso belt has a buckle in the middle, but it also has a lightsaber clip on his left side and then a pouch on his right side. Turning the torso over to the back side, he also has like three pouches on the back. The biggest thing that bothers me is at the top of the torso. I don't know if it's supposed to be a piece of skin or like an underlayer of a shirt, but it doesn't match the skin tone of his face. On the legs, it's very obvious that they printed the sand color on the brown. And it's just like, I don't know, could you not do like a double layer of printing? The color just looks way off, especially since like the top portion of the legs is sand colored and then the bottom is brown. And it's just like a very obvious discoloration from the robes on the torso to the robes on the legs, this opaque color. So a little bit of lacking in quality here, but luckily if you're gonna be displaying him with his poncho on anyways, it does a really good job of hiding these print defects. Next up we have Darth Maul. I did hear a lot of buzz about the fact that he does not have pupils the way that the other Darth Maul minifigures do. I'm bringing out the other Darth Maul minifigure that I have from the Duel on Mandalore set. Obviously it's a very different mold entirely, but it has those black pupils that have been pretty consistent throughout previous versions of Darth Maul, I believe. Overall, this isn't something that bothers me, but if you want to see what it looks like, here you go. As far as the body goes, I am not sure, but I think this is a new mold because he does have these lines in the bottom for the shoes or feet. I don't think that it's like feet or anything like that, but there's extra lines on the Sith robes on his leg printing for sure. There's not much you can do when you're wearing black robes to add detail, but they do a good job with the printing here for the outlines on the front side and the back side of his torso. Now, of course, we do get a bonus minifigure for the 25th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars of Saul Guerrera. This is a really great looking minifigure. The printing details on his torso, on his shoulder pads, even on the backside of his torso. His cape looks really good. The colors on it are really awesome. You can see there's printing on his foot to show, you know, that he has a mechanical leg. He has a gray hand on the left side, which is show that it's mechanical. Honestly, most of Saul Guerrera is mechanical by this point in his life. I believe they are using the outfit from Rogue One and or Andor. I did not plan that. I swear I did not. I feel like his outfit is too green. I just feel like it's too green. And I definitely stand by my who asked for the Saw Gerrera minifigure. I do like Saw Gerrera. I really enjoyed his cameo in Andor. On to the actual ship itself. I think this is a really beautiful looking ship. I think this looks exactly what it's supposed to be. You have the ability to open these wings up for when it is in flight mode. It does have landing gear that you can fold up for when it is in flight mode and fold down when you want to park it. I personally will likely be displaying this on one of these acrylic display stands. This is from Tricked Out Bricks. They did not pay me to advertise. I just really like their products. Look at that. This looks sick. Back to the details of the ship. If you lift this door on the top, you can see that this is where you can deposit your three probe droids that come with this ship. This hatch up top, it's a really beautiful looking printed part. I just think it looks so cool with the dark red coloring. There's also a back hatch and this is where you can store Darth Maul's speeder bike that he famously almost runs over Anakin with. These parts here also slide open just for ease of you know, this cockpit area. So really cool, a lot of moving parts in here for access inside. There's also a printed part in there that you'll see is like the dash computer. On the underside of the ship, let me show you real quick the mechanism to get the probe droids to drop. There's actually this rubber part applying pressure on this brick because that is what allows the door in the bottom to slide open. It is a very, minuscule, tiny little detail, but I promise you that if you don't have that piece of rubber stuck in there correctly, you're going to have a bad time. And I say this from experience because as I was building, it was bothering me that it was mushed in. So I was like, I'll just have it facing outward. And then I tried setting it down and every single time the hatch door opened. So now you know, and then you can just open the hatch on the top and drop your probe droids in that way. And then on the bottom side, it just, That's freaking cool. I also totally completely almost forgot to tell you guys that there are some missile launchers 
underneath this front pointy part of the ship, they're pretty well hidden. And honestly, because I'll be mostly using this as a display piece and not a playset, it slipped my mind. So I don't have any of the previous Sith Infiltrator ships to compare it to. This one I now understand, even though it is only 20 pieces less than the previous Sith Infiltrator that released in 2014 or 2015, I believe, is much smaller. So because of the size, because of the price point of $70 basically, and you are getting three minifigures, I'm not really counting Saw here because Saw is a bonus minifigure. This is not a part of the price. This is part of the 25th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars. So when I consider this, when I consider the piece count and I consider there's three minifigures, I really think that the set is missing a fourth minifigure applicable to the set. Again, not the bonus minifigure. I know if we would have had a Padme, it would have been a repeat Padme mold, but I think that this is what the set is missing, especially because we don't get enough Padme representation. We really don't. We have, what, three, four Padme outfits in Lego minifigure form when she's famously worn like 30, 60 outfits, probably more if you account for the ones that she wore in the Clone Wars. So including a Padme minifigure, I feel like just would have been the easiest way to get just a bit more out of your value. As it stands, I can't recommend this Lego set at its retail price. I can see people maybe rushing to get this, you know, bonus minifigure, but I would definitely wait for double, triple points. Maybe, maybe there will be an offer like that for May the 4th weekend. I just by Christmas time can really see you able to get this set at at least $20 off. If you've made it this far, please hit that thumbs up button. It really helps my channel. And if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. I would love to have you here. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'm curious to know which sets from the May the 1st wave you're wanting to pick up. 